Hello, this is a presentation of some of the ongoing work we have been doing to make it easier to run an atlas. We are going to be talking about the technologies used for installation. This will be of most interest to projects that are running or interested in ALA components. We'll talk through the aims of this work, then discuss two approaches that we've been looking at in parallel. We'll also touch on some of the other work the atlas has been doing in the last 12 to 18 months. So why are we doing this? We want to make it easier to maintain an atlas, to install and to update components. We also want to take advantage of modern infrastructure technologies that make it easy to support replication, rollout updates, zero downtime deployments. Anyone who's tried to use ALA components to date knows that we rely on virtual machines and Ansible for deployment. We haven't revisited this approach for some years, instead of focusing on application development. So we do have some technical debt here and some uplift work to be done. The technology at the heart of what we've been looking at is Docker. Docker is an open source platform that enables developers to build containers for applications. This is not a new technology and not a new technology for ALA. We have been using this in part for some time, but the Atlas hasn't adopted a wholesale approach for running entirely with Docker to date. There is experience of this technology within the community. There are other atlases such as Sweden, France, Brazil, who have all dockerized ALA components and used them in production. So the community has some really good experience here that we've been able to benefit from. So as a starting point, we are now pushing versions of components to the Atlas of Living Australia Docker Hub repository. And we are in the process of setting up continuous builds to Docker Hub for all of these components. So updated images will automatically flow to these online repositories for new releases. But Docker is only part of the solution. We still need to provide a method for setting up infrastructure and deployment. There are multiple ways of deploying Docker components and we've spent some time exploring the different options. After some initial work, we've identified that it makes sense to provide, to provide two paths here. The first solution is for smaller and medium atlases or atlases wanting to use on-premise machines or a small number of virtual machines. The second solution is based on a cloud provider such as AWS. Anyone who's used a platform such as AWS in Azure will know that there is a learning curve with these platforms, particularly around identity and access management. So we are conscious of this learning curve for smaller and medium atlases that are currently not using these platforms. The Atlas has been using AWS for around 10 years, so our primary interest has been looking into ways that we can run this on AWS, but in a reusable and platform independent way so that we can share the artifacts with the community. So for the first solution, the technology that we've been looking at is Docker Swarm. For small and medium portals in terms of technical team size and hardware requirements, we concluded that Docker Swarm was the best technology to provide the orchestration. Docker Swarm is also the orchestration used by the Swedish biodiversity data infrastructure and they've been using it now for some years. We have added Docker Swarm support to our Living Atlas toolkit and the ALA install repository. This allows us to progressively switch from an infrastructure based in virtual machines to an infrastructure based on Docker containers. The second solution is based on Kubernetes, an open source container orchestration system. We have been looking into managed Kubernetes services. Kubernetes is known to be time consuming and technically difficult to set up and install by yourself without in-house experience. The managed service helps with this. The three biggest cloud providers support a managed service with Kubernetes. ALA has been trialing EKS, Amazon's Elastic Kubernetes service. EKS is a managed service so that brings less maintenance and overhead for running a cluster. While we are using EKS, we're confident a similar experience can be had on Microsoft Azure and the Google Cloud Platform. 
So how do we create packages of the components so that they can be installed on a cluster? That's where Helm comes in. So Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes and tool for installing applications on Kubernetes clusters. ALA has set up a Helm chart repository that will be a source of reusable charts for other atlases to use. So we've been thinking about digestible analogies for these changes. The legacy way of installing components has been to use Ansible with the ALA install GitHub repository, which contains the playbooks. Fintente has been supporting the Living Atlas Toolkit for some years now, which makes it a lot easier to install ALA components with Ansible. With Docker Swarm, the stack is pretty similar. The Living Atlas Toolkit now has integration with Docker and Docker Swarm for deployment. For Kubernetes, we are still using Ansible and ALA install for the setup of environmental specific configuration. We are also using Helm to deploy the applications into the cluster. So I'll briefly touch upon other things that ALA has been working on in the last 12 months. Recent work for the Atlas team has included work on the API gateway. This has involved ensuring all applications support OpenID Connect and improving web service documentation with support for open API standards. As covered in Peggy Newman's talk on Monday, we have spent some time in the last year looking at providing richer support for event-based Darwin Core archives with particular support for hierarchical event models. We are currently redeveloping the component known as the Species List Tool. This will have a more modern user interface and clearer access control for lists. Piers Higgs from Gaia Resources has talked about the restricted access species data in Australia platform. We continue to collaborate with GBIF on the Data Ingestion Pipelines project. The Atlas is now running these pipelines using Amazon's Elastic MapReduce service. We are now using Airflow to provide some workflow management of our data ingestion. This year, we have started a large activity to improve the user interface and user experience of ALA. This has been led by Javier Molina. Thank you all for listening. Enjoy Tadwig 2023. Let's double check whether Dave or Vicente are online. All right. Hi, Dave or Vicente. Let's see whether the questions here online. Sorry, not online. In in the room. I can see yeah, Vicente is uh, online. Any questions here in the room? Do you have a, any questions online, Richard? No, no nothing. All right. I think that concludes the presentation. Thanks yeah. for that, Dave. But thank you all for the presentation. And uh, now we'll.